Update 1.12 is out now on the test servers and brings with it some sweeping changes. I'll begin by covering the main things you'll want to know about this update, and then we'll take a closer look at the developer update with David Fifield that was released shortly after the dev stream. You may have seen my video from a couple weeks ago where I tested the reload bug and figured out how to replicate it, fix it, and prevent it. Well, I'm happy to say that video should soon be irrelevant, as update 1.12 includes a long-awaited patch for the reload bug. I will be attempting to verify if the patch is successful and reporting back, so if you happen to encounter any issues related to reloading on the test servers, feel free to reach out to me here in the comments or via Twitter. This next change caught me off guard because, I'll be honest, I genuinely didn't think the dev team had any intention of addressing left peak advantage. But as it goes, I thought wrong. In update 1.12, the player model has been adjusted relative to the camera placement, and so ends the age of left peak. We'll also be receiving two new quest lines: the Ward of the Reptilian and Vengeance of the Skinned. Their names do sound like they're titles from a fantasy series you'd find in the young adult section of your local library, and much like books in a series, they are sequential. The Ward of the Reptilian will run from the 22nd of March to the 22nd of April, and Vengeance of the Skinned will run from the 26th of April to the 27th of May. These new quest lines will also serve as the initial route to unlock four new weapon variants. The Centennial Shorty, a medium slot variant of the Centennial with increased sway and recoil that should feel slightly worse than that of the Winfield Vandal for comparison. Additionally, the Shorty features a reduced ammo capacity and will be priced at 103 hunt dollars. The Centennial Shorty Silencer, the Shorty but with a silencer. The silenced version has increased damage falloff, reducing its range, and a price of 137 hunt dollars. The Crag Bayonet, a crag with a bayonet, priced at 426 hunt dollars. And the Crag Sniper, a crag with a sniper scope, priced at 610 hunt dollars. The Shorty variants are tied to the Ward of the Reptilian, and the Crag variants are tied to Vengeance of the Skinned, with each weapon being unlocked by completing a specific act in their associated questline. After the questlines have ended, the new variants will be added to the regular unlock order in the Book of Weapons. Some sharp eyes noted that one of the questline acts visible during the dev stream had an objective that mentioned investigating gator traps. It was later explained during the Q&A portion of the stream that Gator Traps are a new interactable world item that will be featured by both of the new questlines. Unlike other interactable objects during events, like the Soul Traps, the Gator Traps are non-destructible and can be used by multiple teams. They will spawn on every map near bodies of water and be visible in dark sight much like clues. Yes, the quest lines are time limited, but objectives will now feature completely shared contributions between you and your teammates, which should make them a lot easier to complete. This change will also apply to challenges and will retroactively apply to the Billy Story quest line as well. Update 1.12 also brings us a ton of UI cleanup, including a much needed restructuring of the weapon selection menu. Legendary weapons are no longer treated as their own instances and will instead be applied as skins to the base weapon. The exceptions to the new system will be in the case of contraband weapons, instances of weapons you haven't unlocked yet, and weapons with any level of dirt. So rest easy hoarders, we can keep our 17 stolen uppercuts. The next change I'd like to mention is definitely the most entertaining. The tutorials have been entirely redone and made much more helpful to new players and from the looks of it brings the tutorial system more in line with other titles on the market. The best part of this, however, is that while playing the tutorial, players will have their hand held by none other than Doug Cockle, the voice behind Geralt of Rivia from the Witcher series. The pain is forever, but the money is worth it. Winds howling, and so am I. Wildcard Contracts Wildcard contracts are an experimental, I repeat, experimental test run of a new contract system. There will be two contracts available for Bounty Hunt, the first being the standard contract with a random rotation of maps, bosses, and times of day, excluding night. Night will be excluded from the regular rotation and instead be the fixed time of day in the second contract option, the wildcard contract. This is only for testing purposes and I assume could either be joined or replaced by other wildcard contracts, such as last events inferno map condition. I got the impression that this experimental change will function similarly to the inferno as well, and that our feedback will influence how frequently we see this test active. 
This next change isn't experimental, but it is in beta. Combat logs, the damage logs we've been asking for. When you die, you will now see a reworked damage history log, which will show all key events up to 90 seconds prior. This includes outgoing damage, healing, damage done to and received by AI, boss banishments, and so on. Again, it will still be in beta and sadly cannot log at what point I start panicking in fights. The overhauled weapon statistics is another meaningful change included in the update and is pretty self-explanatory. Most notably, spread sway and vertical recoil replaced the weapon handling statistic, cycle time has been added, and the rate of fire stats have been recalculated. The next big thing in update 1.12 is what I believe will be the most controversial, the solo gameplay changes. Self-revive has returned as a solo only option for the necromancer trait, with the time until you can use it after dying being increased from 4 seconds to 10. I think we all saw this coming. Magpie has undergone a buff that may have taken it from F tier to S tier, at least in the hands of a solo player. While the benefit of applying all three effects upon picking up a bounty token is applicable to everyone, solo players get the added benefit of double dark sight boost, a total of 10 seconds, and double the dark sight boost gained back from looting dead hunters and investigating clues. Solo players will also benefit from double the range when using the trait serpent, a total of 50 meters. The underdog bonuses for bounty hunt contracts have also increased. Solo versus duo has increased from 250 to 300. Solo versus trio from 500 to 600, and duo versus trio from 125 to 150. Without getting too opinionated at the moment, I do predict an increased demand for fire and concertina bombs. So saddle up solos. Saddles! Decor turned loot dispensers. Saddles now have a chance to be lootable for anything from guns to consumables to hunt dollars, and are to be found on hitching posts and, you guessed it, the dying horses. For a game with more dead horses than Red Dead Online, it does not surprise me in the slightest that we are now being given more incentive to put the horses out of their misery. Map changes. We got some. The largest change is the addition of a basement level and entrance to Weeping Stone Mill, and the rest appear to be the work of the Bayou's tireless groundskeeper Richard. Steve has been buffed, and their explosion damage has increased to 25. This one honestly scares me. Choke and Poison Bolt Clouds have received an increased area of effect. Bolts, not bombs. New loading screens and tips are here, and Dennis stated during the dev stream that they're laying the groundwork for a dynamic hint system that targets players based on their expertise, meaning new players will receive more basic, mandatory knowledge, while veteran players would see more advanced tips and tricks. The Lamat Carbine has seen a slight rate of fire increase, a recoil decrease, and a realignment of the sights, and a removal of our excuse for poor aim. The audio of interior footsteps has been improved further, and should make it easier to distinguish if an enemy hunter is above you in a building, specifically on wood floors. Quick play is seeing a little love. Traits received from rifts are now displayed in the ticker on the side of your screen, so no more checking your map to see what you got. In addition, some additional variation has been added to the starting equipment for quick play recruits. And finally, no major update would be complete without the art team flexing just a little bit. Legendary cosmetics dropping with update 1.12 include a firebomb skin, a Romero Alamo skin, and a Spark Silencer skin, along with four weapon charms and four legendary hunters, Wormbite, the Hornback, the Scaled Ward, and the Skinned, with the latter two being unlocked through the new quest lines. Update 1.12 is bringing a lot to the table on its own, but the roadmap discussed by Senior Community Manager Rick Taylor and Hunt General Manager David Fifield in Crytek's developer update had me taking a brick shit. I talked in my last video about the interview PC Gamer conducted with David Fifield about Crytek's decision to upgrade Hunt's version of CryEngine from 5.6 to 5.11. This news was apparently only the tip of the iceberg, as Crytek has significant plans for Hunt going forward. In 2023, we can expect four large-scale updates, in addition to regular updates and hotfixes, with a major focus being placed on additional servers and better network infrastructure. Fifield specified that the reload bug has its roots in both game code and latency issues, and that the team investigating and resolving that bug is working to address other related latency issues, including zero ping issues, rubber banding, and the trade window. He also mentioned additional specialists having been recruited to the team, increasing their ability to tackle some of the larger goals for Hunt's overall stability. 
we see the first example of this with the resolution of the reload bug here in update 1.12, otherwise known as the spring update. Going forward, they were also looking at slightly adjusting the MMR brackets for a broader range of skill in each match to place an emphasis on full lobbies. On the same note, the relationship between quick play and bounty hunt is being looked at to address the community's concerns regarding deranking. For the summer update, we should see the first of another trilogy of events and a new type of bounty target, a roaming boss. And with the new gator themed quest lines, I can't help but make assumptions. These bosses will technically be called Wild Targets, and we'll be getting more details in the future. We will also see the Pact system return in some form, an expansion of the weather-based wildcard conditions, and new legendary international hunters. First Nation hunters were specifically mentioned, which could indicate a return of the hunters from the Light the Shadow event. Additionally, the summer update should bring the previously promised change to the respec system. With this change, blood bonds will no longer be associated with respecing traits or health bars. It's unclear whether these options will then cost hunt dollars, as Fifield stated that there are additional gameplay mechanics they are looking at implementing. Stalker Beetle variants were also teased, and I've decided to believe that they would just be Steve in different tiny hats. Across the fall and winter updates, we should see another event, transparency regarding the reporting system, and something I'm incredibly excited about, a shooting range. This feature will include targets at a variety of ranges, the ability to load into the range with friends, and a PvP toggle option. Not only will this be insanely useful for new players, but it will provide longtime players like myself somewhere to conduct deeper dives into Hunt's mechanics. We'll also be hearing more details on the engine upgrade, which should start being done sometime here in 2023, and will clear a path for the Gen 9 version for next-gen consoles. Towards the end of the discussion, Rick and David touched on the future of Hunt beyond 2024, and we now know for a fact that a new map and an entirely new biome is being worked on. We won't see this in 2023, but it's currently tracked for early 2024. They also have some prototype modes in the works to be tested, along with custom lobbies. All of this together is truly a gargantuan amount of upcoming and future content planned for Hunt, and I am extremely excited. I have my reservations about some of the planned features, but my main takeaway is that the Hunt team has grown, highlighted their dedication to the game, and continued their efforts in making Hunt better. Hunt's potential longevity has basically doubled with the news of this engine upgrade, and changes being implemented to help new players get acquainted with the game and stick with it longer will only increase the growth of the community. Don't forget to hop on the test server, test things out, and give your feedback to the devs. I think 2023 could be a very good year for Hunt. Cletus, you'll be a partner for this exercise. Cletus! Bullseye!